I've done a live Facebook feed. Hey, Karen, how you doing? Uh, first of all, I've done a live Facebook feed, but I want to see, um, this might be a good way to, to reach out to people and to um, just help more people. So this might be something I could continue to do uh, more often. Hey, Susan, how are you? Good to hear you. Or good, good that you can see me and hear me. Awesome, awesome. Again, we're going to wait just a couple more minutes to let more people in here. Um, because I know some people are getting off of work and they're probably not able to get on right at five. Hey, Kristen. <laughs> and if there's anybody last minute you want to invite, go ahead and invite them here. Um, I'm going to be going over a lot of important stuff, a lot of stuff that I wish I would have known when I started in network marketing. Um, a lot of good pointers, a lot of good uh, questions I've received that I'm going to answer here live. Uh, a lot of stuff that, I mean, really this is valuable information if you use it. Um, it's going to help you go a lot further in your network marketing business. Um, and it's a lot of stuff that people don't normally tell you. It's why I didn't know about it when I first started. So, And if you guys have questions, um, I've got a list of questions here and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to all of them. But if you guys have questions, go ahead and post them here as well, and I'll, I'll jot them down so we can um, so I can answer those questions for you. And just so you guys know, I'm on my computer as well, so multitasking. Cool, cool. All right, this is pretty cool. It's a lot cooler than a webinar because um, you can probably reach more people this way. All right, well, I'm not going to delay any longer. We've got a uh, few people on here. I know we'll get more people as we go along. But um, just first of all, to introduce myself, if you don't really know me that well, I know you're on my friends list probably, but in network marketing, we tend to connect with people because we're in the connection, um, a connection-based industry where we're connecting with other people. So it's very common to have people on your friends list and you don't even actually know who they are. So let me just introduce myself real quick. Uh, my name is Brandon Fry. I started in uh, network marketing just a year and a half ago. Uh, within about six, seven months, I became a top earner in my company. In fact, the top earner in my company and earning a six-figure residual income, uh, six-figure year income. And uh, since then, I've helped thousands of people to begin making money online uh, with my, my exclusive team training and, and helping people one-on-one -on -one to realize what it takes to become a successful network marketer in this industry today of internet technology, social media. Um, I even use direct mail still for, uh, for my business and uh, several different ways to, um, to, to grow your business. But so I've helped thousands of people since I started and really I've shifted my focus from what can I do for myself to what can I do for more people. That's why a lot of you people that are on here probably aren't even on my team. They're probably not even in my business. And I'm not even going to mention my business here because it doesn't matter. I want to help you guys, uh, help you understand what it really takes to become a successful person, perhaps a top earner in your network marketing company. Now, who is this live event for? This live event is not for the person who joins a network marketing opportunity to enjoy the products. Maybe they want to dabble a little bit in, in selling the products. This is not for you. This is for the people who are serious about making a, a serious income from home and uh, really have that drive, that hunger, that thirst to go out and um, conquer all. Like I named the event, Conquer Network Marketing. If you're serious about becoming a top earner in your company, that's who this event's for, okay? Um, now, first of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over some of these questions. I got a lot of really good questions. There's a lot more I really could probably... Uh, I've covered, but I think I'm going to probably run out of time. Again, if you do have questions uh, during this, go ahead and submit your questions below and I'll try to get that, get the answer to you before uh, we end here. But this will probably run maybe 45 minutes to an hour. We'll see how long it takes. Uh, so I've got several good questions from people. Um, one was, uh, what would you contribute most of your success to? Uh, my personal success, I contribute most of it to really my drive to succeed. You know, when I got started in network marketing, I didn't have a, um, you know, I didn't have a, a plethora of tools laid right at my feet. I didn't have, um, you know, I really had to have that passion, that drive to find out what works, make it happen, and and take and have no excuses whatsoever. And I think that mentality, that entrepreneurial mindset, has really driven me to the point where I'm at today, um, becoming a top earner and so on. And it really. My, my focus, like I mentioned, shifted. So 
in the beginning, it was all about how can I make money? How can I make money? How can I be- create time and financial freedom for myself? It wasn't about helping anybody else. Um, but since focusing into more of what can I do for others, uh, my business has exploded. Because once you stop caring about your success, your personal goals and stuff like that, which are important in the beginning for sure, and we'll go over that in a minute, but once you can start focusing on what can I do to impact other people's lives, whether that's using the network marketing pro- or the products you're offering in your network marketing company, or if it's just to enrich and better their lives in a financial way, you know, money is not everything. We, we're all aware of that. Money does not create happiness, but it sure makes life a lot easier. And so when you can go out and help a father of, maybe it's a single father of four kids, when you can help him create a substantial and uh, sustainable income, a residual income from home, you're impacting so many lives. You're impacting five lives right there. So there's a lot more than just money, but when you can start helping other people and start really focusing on that, that's when you're going to see your, your business blow up. Because as soon as you're helping other people get what they want, you know, it's cliche, but uh, then you're going to start getting more of what you want. Uh, so I could contribute most of my success to that drive, that passion to help others um, and not taking any excuses, just going at it, going for it and making things happen. Uh, another question I got was, uh, what? Uh, uh, this is a longer question, I've, Paul from Paul, and I went ahead and made this condensed a little bit. But uh, how do you stay consistent in juggling tasks? You know, And I think what he was getting to is what is my DAP or my daily action plan? Especially when I first got started, I was doing several different forms of marketing uh, for my business. And you know, in the beginning, and I, and I hate to say this because it really is good to have a daily action plan of, of consistently things you do throughout the day. You know, if you can make a plan, a schedule every single day that you hit these certain uh, points and you get all these certain tasks done, um, then, then that's great. When I started, I didn't have an action plan. I wasn't very well organized. Um, and I just really I had several different things I did. I was marketing on Instagram. I was marketing on Facebook. I was marketing on YouTube. Um, I was sending out postcards. Um, I was doing all these different things for my business. And I just, and, oh yeah, and more importantly, this is probably the most, most important task that I did um, at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, is I would go down my prospect list. Um, if you're not building a list, guys, you need to be building a list. We'll get more on, on that in a minute. But one of my main things that I made sure I did at least once or twice a week was I would go down my list of prospects and call them. So many people don't call prospects. They want to have this, uh, this system that works for them or, or they want people to just go to their website and sign up. You know, a lot of times that doesn't work exactly that way. I mean, it can, and if you have a good email follow-up series, that can certainly help, and you can have your business run pretty much automated, but if you can take the time out of your day to just call down the the list of people who have opted into your page, uh, who've requested more information, if you follow up with them, your conversion rates are going to increase by 35, 45%, and that's a mathematical, I mean, that's been proven. So by following up people by phone, that um, you're going to increase your conversions that much. And that was one of my major things that I, that I made sure I did at least once or twice a week. And that was in, I guess you would say, my daily action plan. But I wasn't the type who was so, uh, I wasn't that, um, what do you call it? I wasn't that, uh, I didn't have that schedule. I wasn't that had that rigorous schedule that I had to stick to. But as long as you're hitting these certain things, you, you know, if you're doing several different marketing strategies, make sure you stay consistent with it, whatever you're doing. Stay consistent with it. You will get results if you stick with it. Okay. So, um, so as far as his question goes, how do you stay consistent in juggling tasks? Um, yeah. And, and another question he had, which is actually goes in with that one is how do you stay inspired through all the mundane, mundane, repetitive tasks? So a lot of the stuff we do in network marketing, it is repetitive. It is, uh, it can become mundane. Um, probably the biggest thing I use, the biggest tool I use to stay motivated is, well, I look at, I watch a lot of videos and I read books on um, different entrepreneurial subjects um, to stay motivated, but my inspiration is, well, at least in the beginning, it was, you know, my nine, the old nine to five jobs I used to work. I worked a ton of different jobs, part-time, full-time, uh, overtime. <laughs> I worked all these different jobs. And all I have to do is during the day, if I feel like, oh, I don't feel like uh, making that phone call, or I don't feel like sending out that email broadcast. All I have to do is think, man, I remember the days when I used to have to clock in at 4 a.m., work in a a factory for nine hours, and then I would go to lunch whenever the boss said I could go to lunch. 
and then I could go on vacation wherever they said I can go on vacation. If I think about that crap, that life I used to live, then uh, that's easily going to inspire me to do the little stupid little things that I got to do each day. And plus, guys, I have fun with it. You have to have fun with whatever you're doing. Um, you know, I'm just myself. So when like people see my videos on YouTube or, or me on Facebook talking and stuff, they know that's what they're getting. I have nobody to prove anything to. You know, I've already proved myself that I can achieve great success and that I can help others do the same. Um, so, uh, what was I going to hear? So, that's how I stay inspired. Just be yourself, have fun, and uh, do what you love. And if you're not loving it yet, you will, okay? Either you're going to love it for the money or you're going to end up loving it because you can help other people to achieve uh, the same results, the same success. And having that effect in other people's lives, having, affecting that kind of change in other people's lives, that's enough to keep me going alone. So, uh, here's a good question. I get this one quite a bit, actually. Um, so, here's the question. I've got a prospect. I'm not sure I should even sign them up as a distributor because they don't sound like they can even do the business. And this is usually like people who sound like they're not tech savvy. They, you know, maybe they're older or, um, or whatever. And maybe they just don't sound like they have it or maybe they don't sound like they have the entre entrepreneurial spirit to do a network marketing or a home-based business. Um, here's the thing. When I started in, uh, in my company, when I contacted, when I first contacted my sponsor, I had about three or four questions for him. But two of those questions were, uh, what, uh, what were the two questions I do actually remember? Um, I said, I've never done anything like this. Do you think I can, I can do this? Um, and then I, I even threw in there, I'm pretty sure I can because I have more drive than most people I know. I'm pretty sure I can make this happen. Um, and I also asked, you know, what is the startup cost or any hidden fees or anything like that? Well, you know, thinking about those questions now, I probably sounded like somebody who wasn't going to stick around for very long. I probably sounded like somebody who may not be able to make this happen. So looking at that and seeing where I've gotten to today um, proves that you really don't know who is a good prospect and who's not all the time. You know, a lot of the people who I get that want to join my business and they have these huge, lavish dreams of, of signing up three, four, five hundred people in their first month. People who talk big like that are the people that I've found that usually don't do anything. They will uh, quit, join again, quit, join again, join another company, come back to you. They won't do anything because they, they're, I don't know what it is. Their dreams are too big. Their, their minds can't wrap around one thing. Um, so the people that are asking a lot of questions in the beginning, those tend to be the best people. And they're the people that, you know, I can call them like ninja network marketers, ninja marketers, because they'll out of nowhere um, just blow up in your, in your organization and you will notice them eventually. You'll think, what, what, this guy, I didn't even know he was going to do this. So when you're trying to judge when somebody's wanting to join your business and whether they can do it or not, be open-minded. You never know who is actually going to, to reach that level of success and maybe surpass you. I've had people surpass me. Uh, so don't ever pass too quick a judgment on people and don't ever close your door. I mean, you are your business. You are the product. Uh, people don't join network marketing businesses. They join people. So make sure that you are making yourself available and, and don't close the doors on anybody. Um, give everybody that opportunity, that chance to find their success. They may have a rough start. They may have a, a month where it takes them a while to get going. Um, but don't ever doubt anybody because what I've learned is that some of the people that I have doubted in the past have uh, really blown my mind with where they've gone with their business. Um, Here's a good question. And a lot of people, and you've probably heard people say, go out and get as many no's as you can. So how do you handle the no's? How do you handle the rejections? How do you handle uh, people questioning, questioning, um, uh, sorry, I got a question there, it threw me off. Uh, how do you get, how do you handle the objections of people who are not sure and they're, they're really, you know, really scared to join your business or whatever? You know, here what I say is just go out and get as many no's as you can. Eventually, if you, it's all a numbers game. So the more no's you get, there's a yes right around the corner. Um, and just because somebody says no, they're not ready to join your business today, doesn't mean that they're not going to join it next week. Hell, they may even join it tomorrow. Um, I've got so many people, especially with um, a lot of my marketing, like videos and postcards, you know, I have people that will comment on my videos and then like a couple months later, they'll comment again and say, Brandon, I'm getting ready to join. I should have done this a long time ago. So just because somebody says no today doesn't mean that they're, they're not going to um, 
say yes later on. So never shut anybody out. out never, um, certainly never be rude or mean to anybody just because they're not going to join your business. For one, that's going to make you sound desperate. But, uh, but you know, never doubt anybody. You never know. They may come back later on and, and join your business. And again, they may be the ones that become top earner. They may be the ones that just blow up. So uh, don't worry about the no's. You're going to get them. If you didn't, then you've got a magic wand and I want your magic wand. So if you're getting these no's, don't worry about it. Um, the more no's you get, the more yeses uh, are right around the corner. Uh, here's another good question. My sponsor won't help me. I have no tools or no training. What do I do? So, you know, I, I don't get this question a lot. Uh, well, I get questions from other team from other teams in my uh, industry or in my business, but I've also heard this from other industries. Um, and that is, you know, if somebody's promising you something and telling you they're going to offer you all this training, then yes, they should provide you with some form of training to help you get started in your network marketing business. However, if somebody, if you do join with a sponsor and they're not helping you, don't use that as an excuse or a crutch. Don't use that as a reason to quit and give up. Some companies will let you switch over to other sponsors, but I don't even recommend that. I recommend staying where you're at and keep going. Um, when I started, Google search was my best friend. YouTube was my best friend. These books I read were my best friend. I had to go out and find out what worked uh, for me. You know, my sponsor did give me some training, did give me some tools to use, and I'm thankful for that because it helped me get my business going. But I wanted to do more, so I always went out and searched, and I still do today. I mean, this is an industry that's so technical now that you have to constantly, constantly be going out and looking for the newest technology and, uh, and really uh, evolving with technologies to see how you can use them to better your business. This is a perfect example right here, Facebook Live Events. This wasn't around just a few months ago. And it certainly wasn't around when I started in network marketing. And I would have never, in fact, when I started in network marketing, I would have never done this because I was afraid of doing videos, more so a live video I would have never done before. But um, I've certainly grown and decided, you know, I need to learn this, I need to learn that. Just continue to learn and use the different tools out there. But if your sponsor or your team is not providing you with tools and training, um, don't use that as an excuse. Go out and find out what works. Find out what the top earner in your company is doing. What are they doing to achieve results? Obviously, what they're doing works. Um, another good thing to do is if however you got, however you found your sponsor in your network marketing company, chances are that's a good form of marketing. So people find me through postcards. They find me through Facebook. They find me through YouTube videos. So, you know, if they say, hey, Brandon, I found you on a video. What should I do? Shoot a video. <laughs> unless you, unless there's some people who just really don't want to do videos. I understand that. Um, but a lot of the times if you do you know, exactly what your sponsor was doing when they found you or got you, that will probably work for you. Okay. And again, when I started, I said I was never doing video marketing whatsoever. I was scared to death of it. I was afraid I was gonna make a fool out of myself. And now that's one of my favorite things to do. I love shooting videos. It's easy. I really enjoy it. I love sharing information with people and uh, I just love it. So never, you know, um, continue to learn and continue to look things up. Again, Google search should be your best friend. Um, another question, do I need a capture page system or a sales funnel? Um, I don't care what industry, whether you're in health, beauty, uh, whether you're in the next diet pill, um, nutrition, or like I'm in digital educational products, whatever you're doing, whatever company you're in, you need a capture page system. You need a sales funnel. And if nobody's told you about this up until now, then, um, I'll tell you what it is. So, when you join with a network marketing company, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, I'll use, I know there's uh, I know somebody here with Isogenics. So I'm just going to go ahead and say with like Isogenics, we'll say they'll give you a link to sell their products and then you earn commissions on those. So you could send people all day long to your Isogenics link, but you're not going to be capturing their information. You're not going to be able to follow up with them because you're not going to know whether or not they went to your, to your uh, sales page or not. Uh, and I'm using Isogenesis as, a, as an example. I don't think they have any kind of built-in stuff for that. So excuse me if I'm wrong about that. But um, you definitely need some kind of sales funnel system to send people to, not only to capture their information, you know, their name, email, possibly the phone number, so you can follow up with them, but also because there's going to be more information there, more information on those sales pages where you don't have to spend all day explaining the same five things over and over and uh, that sales page is going to do the work for you. It's going to do the heavy lifting for you. And even better than that, so like when 
prospects come to me and they say, Brandon, I want to join your company. Um, I, I just need to learn a little bit more about it. I'll say, okay, great. Well, um, I've got a website set up with a presentation there and you can learn more information about it. And I'll give them the link to my page and tell them to, you know, make sure they let me know if they have any other questions. Otherwise, I'll follow up with them. And, um, you know, what's good about that is not only do they get the information in a really good format, a good uh, video media format that they can really uh, take in, but also they know that, hey, I don't have to sit here all day and explain this business to people. I can just simply send them to this uh, capture page system. I know I can get one on my own. And so all I got to do is send people to this, this sales funnel. So um, there's, there's kind of twofold, but the, really the best part about having a sales funnel is it locks people in with you. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you send people to your network marketing company's landing page, or you send them to your affiliate link, you're not locking them in with you. They may go to the website and leave it, and then about a week later they go back to the website and they join under the CEO or they join under some random person they found on Google search or YouTube or something. Uh, you want to keep people locked in with you, and when you're sending them to a, a specific domain name and specific uh, URL, like um, if your name is um, Karen Darden, you might have KarenDarden.com. Uh, so people, they're going to remember your website, and they're probably going to remember your name. So um, make sure you have a website, a link to send them to, and that sales funnel is going to have, it should have, built-in, what we call built-in autoresponder messages, email messages that go out and uh, will keep people locked in with you, keep people interested and keep sending them back to your sales page so they get signed up with you. So it's very important to have a sales funnel. If you're not doing that, you're truly missing out. You're truly missing out. You're probably, you're never going to reach uh, the level of success you probably want. Um, you may get a couple of people, but you're going to lose more people than you get. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. And I know we got a question. Okay, this is a good question. Jeff just asked, uh, how available do you make yourself? Do you have set hours you take calls each day or is the phone always on? Great, great, great question. I was actually going to get into this here in just a little bit. But this is an excellent question. When I first started, uh, and I agree, I think that everybody should do this. You should give yourself a 90-day period where you focus on just your business. If you're married, if you have kids, if you have close friends that expect you to go out drinking on Wednesday nights or whatever, whatever you have going on in your life, you need to put all of that on hold, okay? And I'm telling you this, and like, like I mentioned at the beginning of this event, this is for serious people. This is for people who want to reach a six-figure income from home uh, working a network marketing business. This isn't for people that just, eh, I want to make a few extra bucks. So if you're really serious, you're going to set apart 90 days when you first get started in your company and devote that entire 90 days. And you may have another job that you're doing. I had another job I was doing uh, when I started. But you need to have that talk with your, your wife or husband and say, hey, look, I'm getting ready to start this online business. This is going to better both of our lives. This is going to totally better our lives financially. We're going to have more time to take vacations. Um, we're going to have that kind of freedom we've always been looking for. But I need you to be patient. I need you to give me this 90 days, this 90 day period to focus purely on my business. Um, I'm going to be here, but I'm not really going to be here. You know, I'm going to be on my computer. I may be around, but I need you to let me focus on this. I'm going to make this happen and uh, you need to make it happen. Okay. So if you're making these kind of promises with your wife, husband, significant and other, you need to make this happen. And in that time, you need to devote all the time you can to your business. When I first started in my first 90 days, probably actually my first six months, I probably slept about an average of five hours a night at most, four or five hours a night. And it's not because I was killing myself to really work the business. I was so excited with the results I was getting. I was so excited that I couldn't stop. I would wake up in the middle of the nights with new ideas. I would wake up in the middle of the nights thinking, oh, I forgot to do this. I need to get up and do this. And because I took that 90 day period and put all my time and focus into it, I had friends that were like, Brandon dropped off the map. Brandon's not around anymore. I haven't seen Brandon in a while. Um, you know, that's because I took my business seriously and that's what it's allowed me to get to where I am today. So I strongly encourage all of my personal members on my team to take 90 days, take um, and focus all their attention. If they're working a full-time job or a part-time job, as soon as you get home from that part-time job or full-time job, you need to jump right into your network marketing business. Like we say, work on your small time fortune on the work on your uh, small time fortune on the side while you're working your full time job. There's nothing wrong with that. 
And many of us have to do that. We have to have a means of providing for our family. So if you do that, it's going to pay you off so great. Because a lot of people that get home from work, they think, I'm so tired. I would really like to just sit up, drink a Coke, kick my feet up, watch TV. You know, if you have that kind of mindset and, and you don't really want to get out of the struggle you're in with that job that you hate, then okay, then that's probably what you're going to do. But if you can just keep in mind and remember the my only way out of having to go to this nine to five job every day is if I come home and bust my butt to make this other business happen, then you'll, um, again, you'll be more inspired to make it happen. Uh, great question, Jeff. Uh, let me see what else he asked. Um, how available to you? Okay. Actually, I got way off track because he asked, how available do you make yourself? So your number one, your number one concern in network marketing should be your customers. Um, AKA your members, your business partners, those are your customers. You are their product. The, whatever they're subscribed to, whatever they're buying, I don't care if it's a health product or whatever, if they're a serious entrepreneur and they're trying to duplicate your success, you are their product. So you need to make yourself available to them as much as possible. When I first got started in this, what got me off on a tangent, uh, when I first got started, I was available 24 seven. There wasn't really many times that I wouldn't answer the phone. I mean, I would, if I was dead asleep, of course, obviously I couldn't answer the phone. If I was in the bathroom, I couldn't answer the phone. If I was in the shower, I couldn't answer the phone. If I was eating, I could answer the phone. I made myself available as much as possible because I knew that if I could help these people to duplicate my success, then I would be taken care of. And, um, and like I said, now my focus really is just on helping other people anyway because um, I know that if I do that, I get what I, what I want anyway. So make yourself available as much as possible. Now, now, once you get past that 90 days, or some people make it a six month period, which I can actually encourage people to do. Um, if you get past that period, you've reached that goal, you've reached a good level of success in your first three months, six months or whatever, you need to start taking time for yourself. You need to, you will burn out, you will crash if you're not careful. So you do have to take care of yourself. And I certainly started doing that after about seven or eight, well, about nine months, I probably started doing that because our COO of my company contacted me and said, Brandon, you're killing it. You're crushing it. You've got to start taking some time for yourself. <laughs> yeah, I think he realized that I was just really going crazy with his business and, uh, and I was doing very well, but uh, he knew that I needed to take care of myself and he was absolutely right. So I started doing that. I started making set hours for myself, but get your plane off the ground first. As we say, network marketing or any, any business whatsoever it's like taking off in an airplane. If you go slow and, and you, uh, if you go slow, you're never going to get quite off the runway. You're going to land at the end, the tarmac and crash. Uh, but if you can take off in the beginning real quick and get going, like I said, 90 days or so, get, take off and then you can idle for a little bit. You can take a week, you can take a few days, stretch, relax, go on vacation, enjoy yourself. You worked hard for it. Um, take your time and, and even more, start setting hours for yourself which I finally started doing after probably about nine months in my business. And now I, I will answer the phone as, as, long, as, as long as I'm awake, um, I typically answer my phone. Um, now I do, after about 6 p.m., I try to make that time more for me unless I have something pressing going on or if I have a, a member who really has a, an issue that needs some attention and only I can fix it, then I will take the time to make sure they have what they need because I know how important that is uh, when you're first starting out to, um, to have that kind of support. So great, great question. Um, he said, do you have set hours? We take calls each day or is the phone always on? Yeah, and the phone is always on. Another question, and this is just a, a follow-up one that I know I usually always get, is Brandon, do you use your personal number or do you use, do you have a separate business line for your business? Well, I am my business. I feel like I am my business um, and that's why I post stuff about network marketing on my Facebook feed because I am my business. If people don't like it, that's their problem. This is my business. This is my life. I enjoy it. I love it. I want to share it with everybody. Um, and along the same lines, I, I use my personal phone number. I don't uh, believe in have a separate line or else I'm just going to be carrying around two phones and I'm going to answer both of them. So why not just use my one line and, um, and just answer it, you know? Um, and another thing is it's a business write-off and as a business write-off, you can only write off one phone. So just write off your one phone. Uh, let's see what else he's asked here. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah, Stephen uh, has been on my team, and he knows for sure that I, I've made myself available. Uh, Jeff also said, uh, how do you handle conversations with prospects or even team members who feel it's your responsibility for their success? For example, what are you going to do for me to make sure this works for me? Uh, it says see more here. Let me see if I can see more. 
prospects members who have a bit of victim mentality. If you don't help me, I can't succeed. Typically, I try to nip that in the bud before they join. So if they're, if they're joining me, and you did mention prospects, so, and, and yes, you still get that from team members as well, but if a team member has got that kind of mentality, they've probably been hurt with another company, and I usually try to figure out what the cause of that hurt was. Was it because you got in with a team that promised you this and that, and they didn't have anything to offer you? Um, did you get in with a company that crashed after a month? Because there are some business opportunities you can join. Uh, what was the one that crashed right when I got started? I um, can't remember the name of it. But there were several, several companies that just they go under because uh, they don't manage their finances and stuff. Um, so there's people who do feel like a victim to this industry or a, a victim because they, they're, really, they're really a victim of their own uh, making. Um, a lot of people, you know, your biggest component, your biggest um, competitor, I should say, is yourself. You're going to talk yourself out of some great opportunities. You're going to talk yourself out of, some, out of doing some things that could really advance you in your business. So I try to really get down to what it is that's causing that problem for that person. Why do they feel that way? Um, and I try to make sure they know that it is not my responsibility that it is their success, but I am here to help them along the way. I am here to offer them some, some training, some marketing strategies to help them succeed in this business. Um, and you know, when you're out there looking for a network marketing opportunity, this is uh, the last question I was going to get to. When you're out there looking for a company to join, there's several things you should really be looking out for. One, do they have a track record of success? Because there are some companies that um, are kind of flash in the pan type businesses where they'll get started, they'll grow too big for their pants and they'll crash and burn because they can't manage the finances or they're not uh, compliant with FTC or whatever and they crash. So make sure that you, there's a good uh, long history with the company you're getting ready to join. Um, you know, and even a long history could be a year, it could be a year and a half. Uh, the parent company with my, my business opportunity has a 17-year-old track record, 17-year track record, so I knew that I was getting in with somebody good. Um, another thing is that you have to make sure that duplication is pretty easy, and duplication is, is uh, really key in this industry. You need to make sure that um, people can break even, meaning the money they put up front, they can get back pretty quickly. Um, and that goes along with the compensation plan. So you need to have a look at the compensation plan, make sure it's something that's really going to allow everybody to grow pretty quickly because you don't want people to have to get 20 customers in order to break even because it's going to take them forever to do that and they're very likely to um, quit before they even reach that. Um, what else is I going to go over? Um, and as far as uh, another thing with network marketing companies which want to join, um, make sure you love it. I mean, a lot of people, and I, the, some of the best advice I got is, you know, you don't have to love the business you're in. Some people just love making money or some people just love helping other people. But if you can find a product that you enjoy, you really believe in, uh, which I do with my company, then you're going to love it that much more. You're not going to be you're not going to be worried about, you know, telling somebody else about it. You're going to be happy to share it with somebody. You need to really kind of believe in your product, believe in your company. And also another important thing is look for support. Uh, whether that's just in your team or also with the company. The company I'm with has a live training and a live opportunity call every uh, Wednesday night tonight. So, um, you know, that's kind of important to me to have that, not only for me to send prospects to so they can learn more about the opportunity, but so I can stay plugged in, stay inspired, stay motivated in uh, my company. Let's see if we had any other questions here. Now, real quickly, um, I'm afraid we're going to go over on time here. But real quickly, I want to go over some do's and don'ts um, in network marketing, uh, things I've seen since I got started, some things I may have even been a victim or done myself. So these things should be able to help you quite a bit. Uh, first, we'll hit on some don'ts, things you shouldn't do. Uh, you shouldn't promote multiple businesses to your members unless, and it's big, unless they're successful in the first company. So if you get somebody, get a prospect into company A, and and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with multiple streams of income because a lot of people are very successful with running like five, six, seven businesses. How? I don't know. I, like, I enjoy my time freedom, so I like to work one business. But some people do do that. But a big problem I see is that some people will bring people into company A and then they will drag them into company B, drag them into company C, drag them into company D. And before you know they're, they've, they're in four companies where they're not making any money. Um, they're in four companies where they don't really, you know, they don't care about any of these companies. They're, they're going to lose their focus. They're going to lose their motivation to even do this in the f first place. 
and uh, you're going to lose them. And more than that, though, and this is way more important, you're going to lose uh, your credibility. You're going to absolutely lose your credibility. And you have to, you really need to maintain your credibility. You need to maintain your reputation in this industry because if for some reason, you know, if you are even just working one company like I do, you know, one day I may go to another, or I may add another, who knows? I don't, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But if I did, I won't want people to remember me as, hey, Brandon was that guy who really helped out a lot of people. He was always there for people. And, you know, he was a true leader in the industry. So he's now in this company, you know, I want to see what that's about and whatever. So your credibility, you know, your reputation, again, you are the end product. You are the product that people are, jo are joining to get. They're not joining to get the next health and beauty magic pill or, or even educational products like I offer. They're joining you, okay? And you have to really get that in your head and um, really assert yourself as, as a leader, assert yourself as a professional. I consider myself a network marketing professional. I don't consider myself a, just a little network marketer or I make this, whatever. When people ask me, like, uh, you know, when I've had to get loans before or, or whatever, or open an account somewhere, people ask me what I do, and I tell them I'm a network marketing professional because I take this, this business, I take this industry very seriously. It's a multi-billion dollar industry and it has to be respected as such. If you don't respect it, um, you're probably not gonna achieve what you wanna achieve in it. So don't promote multiple businesses and drag people through the muck just so you can earn an extra dollar for them because you're gonna end up losing them in all the businesses anyway and you're gonna lose your reputation. Uh, put time limits, oh uh, yeah, uh, this is huge and I had to talk with somebody the other day about this. Um, don't put time limits on your success or have any reservations you know, about if I don't reach this marker, if I don't reach 3,000 my first month, then I'm quitting. Um, don't put time limits on your success. If I had done that, I would have quit in my first month. I would have quit my second month. Um, I kept going, and that's the reason I was able to achieve what I wanted, you know, get the results that I was looking for, because I kept going. People watched me. People saw me. They saw me growing. And if I would have just quit and said, ah, it's not enough, or I, I, whatever, um, I would have never, I truly would have never known how great this life could be. I would have never known what it's like to be able to up and go to Belize one week or up and go to, you know, um, Europe uh, or just be able to go out and buy a car that I want or to just have what I need. You know, a lot of people don't care about any of that stuff. And, and honestly, that's not what's most important to me. But it is nice to be able to know that you're taken care of and you're financially secure. Okay. So um, don't put time limits on your success or have reservations. Another one that goes right along with this, and I'll probably hit this one twice, but another one that goes right along with this is uh, people will say, and I don't understand this at all, but people will say, I don't really want to ramp up my marketing. I don't really want to bring on this warm market I got of these huge uh, network marketers. I don't want to bring them into my business until I start seeing some really good results. That's so retarded, and I don't understand it at all. Why would you put the cart before the horse? Why not go ahead and start ramping up your marketing if you know you can do that? If you know you can get these these big marketers in there, get them in. You know, um, you're not going to receive, you're not going to get the results you want unless you start doing some serious marketing. That's the bottom line. So when people tell me that, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If you know you can do the marketing and get people in, that's going to show that it works. So, um, so yeah. So uh, you know, don't um, don't wait on your success. Don't sit on your success because you're waiting on, um, you know, one marketing strategy to work or, or you want to get, you know, a bunch of cold prospects into your company first. Don't sit on your success. Make it happen. Don't wait on it. Um, don't be an opportunity junkie. Okay. When I joined with the opportunity I'm in now, um, I put my blinders on. I was not going to be looking at other opportunities. I had done that for a couple of years until I finally settled on the one I wanted to join. And I, then I put my blinders on. I went full focus into my business and I just wanted to, to really focus on my business, help other people to duplicate my success and just continue marketing. And anything, anything that popped up, and Facebook is probably the biggest problem with this. Um, and I hate to say that because I'm on Facebook right now, but network marketers are constantly posting links to different opportunities on Facebook. That's fine. I do the same thing. I think it's great. But if you're in a business and you want to become a top earner in that business, you better put your blinders on and quit clicking links. And uh, instead of clicking links, how about learn for what they're posting? Is it is it attracting you to their ad? Um, I use when I see stuff like that or 
our other presentations, because I create presentations sometimes and, and capture page systems. You know, if I see other systems and stuff, the only reason why I'm looking at it is to take notes and learn what they're doing and see if I can implement something they're doing. But I don't look at any other business opportunities. People quit asking me that a long time ago when they figured out, oh, Brandon's serious about um, the company he's in. He's not going anywhere else. So put your blinders on. If you're jumping around from business to business, and I call them program junkies, you know, people who see the next shiny thing and they're like, ooh, I want to I get a piece of that. Um, the people who jump around in different opportunities never make it. Um, they might have a little bit of success, but typically they stick around one to three months in an opportunity and then they jump around to the next one. They never really truly have any substantial um, or sustainable success. They're constantly trying to rework uh, a new company and make it happen. And I see so many people like I have had a, I've had guys who get in and in their first week, they'll bring on three or four members. And then like a month later, they're gone. And I'm like, what happened? What are you doing? He said, oh, I saw this opportunity and I got into that. I'm like, okay. And then I keep my eye on them. And then the next month, they're in another opportunity. Um, I see that a lot. And it's, uh, you know, some people just, they really just get high almost on the uh, experience of joining another opportunity, getting started in that. I think they just, they're addicted to it in some ways. So stay focused, put your blinders on, whatever network marketing company you're in, stick with it. It's obviously probably a proven model, so stick with it. You will get the results you want, but you can't be jumping around from company to company. Don't start another company unless you're making money in your first one. That's a very, very, very important thing. Uh, right, and here's another thing I've, um, I've witnessed uh, not too long ago. Um, but don't tell people your hopes. Um, tell them how you're going to make your dreams come true and show them how you're making your dreams come true. What I mean by that so when I first started, uh, I made some videos in the beginning before I was even making much money. I started making videos talking about my success and how I'm, I'm already getting results. Even though I didn't have any people joined up with me, I was still getting results because people were opting in, getting more information. I was talking to people. And to my eyes, that's success. Now, what I'm not saying is don't go out and lie to people. Don't downright lie to people and say, hey, I'm making $5,000 a month in this, this business. You should join me. Don't do that. Don't lie. They'll see through it. Eventually, they'll find out. But you can provide hope, provide inspiration. Tell people, say, hey, yeah, I'm already seeing results. I think in about a few months, I'm probably going to end up quitting my full-time job and just doing this full-time. Um, you're not lying. You're not saying, hey, um, I'm making X amount of money or whatever. But you're, you're offering hope, and you're telling them you're on your way to your dreams. Don't tell people, I can't wait till I make some money in this company. Don't tell people, one of these days, this is going to work. I've seen people post that stuff online. I'm like, don't say that stuff. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Provide hope for people. Tell them it works. Show them it works. Um, a lot of network marketing is a self-fulfilled prophecy. You know, people see you having success, and they're going to want to get started with you and join with you. Um, and the same thing goes with them and their downlines. So um, the key to making it happen is believing it's going to happen, have faith that it's going to happen, and assert yourself as a leader and somebody who's having success in uh, your business. Now, here's some things you should do. All right, you ready? And again, guys, if you have any other questions, uh, go ahead and comment there, and uh, I'll get to them. I should have some time. Here's some things you should do. Like I've mentioned, become a leader and learn to brand yourself as such. So when I first started, I knew that I had to, um, I knew that I wanted to duplicate what my sponsor and what other people in my business were doing. Now, I took it a step further. I didn't want to just duplicate the marketing strategies that they were doing. I didn't want to just learn how to uh, post Facebook ads. I wanted to learn how to become a leader. And I had to do some extensive research outside of um, my team, but I also took a lot from my sponsor to learn how to really do that. And I did that by watching other network marketing professionals in the industry. One of my favorite guys to watch on uh, YouTube is Eric Worre, Network Marketing Pro. Uh, great video, great content. He's got, he's inspired me probably more than anybody. I hate that he was just in New York and I missed it, but, uh, but I learned a lot from him, how he asserts himself, how he handles himself. And, um, you can really tell that he's somebody who knows what he's doing. He has, um, he has a drive and focus and experience and I wanted to assert myself as such. And I did it from almost day one. Within the first month, I was learning how to really create videos where I can show people what I'm learning. And I really was truly learning stuff. So I really had something to offer, but you have to really believe that you are a leader. 
you know, this industry is filled with leaders and followers. You need to figure out which one you're going to be. Again, I asked that important question at the beginning of this event because I wanted to find out if you were a leader or a follower. If you're a follower, you probably dropped off this feed a long time ago because this stuff scares the crap out of you. <laughs> but if you're a true leader and you want to learn how to become a top earner in your industry, you've got to learn how to assert yourself as somebody who can be a coach, who is a, a leader, a success coach, somebody who has something to offer. And probably the, the hardest thing about it is once you do learn how to help people, once you um, learn how to market and really close sales and all that good stuff, you need to believe that you can help other people do the same thing. Susan asked, what was his name? It's Eric Worre, W-O-R-R-E, Eric Worre. Or you can just look up Network Marketing Pro on YouTube. I love the guy. I don't make any money by telling you that. Uh, great guy and great information on his channel. But anyway, assert yourself as a leader, assert yourself as a coach, somebody who can help other people. Again, you're the end product that they're buying, so make sure you are um, a leader. Again, I mentioned this earlier, and I told you I was going to hit on it again. Use Google. Find solutions from multiple sources. Again, I've already told you a couple of different things I've tapped into. Books, YouTube videos, um, different uh, network marketing courses and stuff like that. Um, other people in my, my business, other people in other industries. Uh, I watch Shark Tank. I don't know if you guys watch that. I love it. It just drives me to want to do better in my own business. Even though our business is a little bit different, quite different from what they are usually pitching on Shark Tank, I can still always grab a ton of motivation from watching that and so many other shows like that. So um, find different, multiple sources of motivation. Also find different sources uh, to get tools or to learn new strategies of how to market your business or how to close sales, how to, um, you know, there's different scripts you can find online for talking to prospects and closing them. Um, go out and find that stuff. And make it happen, okay? Because um, a lot of people, and that, that goes back to, uh, to was it Jeff's question, because he said, you know, people like to blame their sponsor. Their sponsor didn't give them what they needed and stuff. If you're going out and searching for stuff, if you go out and make it happen, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna make it happen. You're going to have success. So people, you know, they, they can come to me and say, Brandon, I need this, need that. Usually I have a lot of what they're looking for. But if I don't, I'll go out and search with them. I'll say, hey, let's get on Google real quick and find out you know, how to do that. That'd be All right, guys, I think I lost connection there for a second. I think I'm back. All right, so um, staying inspired. Yeah, and my, again, my sources of inspiration, Eric Worre's a big one. Uh, if your company does any kind of live calls, uh, live opportunity webinars or anything like that, make sure you're on those because that's, that's really going to... Um, manifest some inspiration in you that you probably can't find elsewhere. When you're really plugged in with your family, your, your network marketing family, that's going um, to keep you going. It's going to keep you going more than probably anything else. So I definitely recommend doing that. Read Success Magazine. Read uh, different books. Um, I've got a few right here in front of me. I think I'm losing connection here. Um, I've got a couple of books right here that I've been, been, been reading. Uh, Tribes by Seth Godin um, about being a, a leader. Uh, the Art of Persuasion. Um, and several other books when I just got from our CEO, he sent me really cool. Um, but did, there's, um, I think I'm losing the connection here. Hopefully it'll stay connected now. Uh, so let me get through this real quick before I lose you again. Um, okay. And these are things you, sh you should do. Um, and actually this is one you shouldn't do. You should not pro your, promote your company like crazy and then just fall off the face of the earth. That is network marketing suicide. If you're out promoting a company like crazy and you make it public to your family and friends, your warm market as I call it, if you're going out and telling people, hey, this company is awesome, I'm killing it in this, I love their products, I love the company, I love, you know, I've gone to the events, I love it, and then you quit marketing them, obviously you're full of crap. <laughs> obviously you're full of crap. People are going to realize that and they're not going to trust you to join you in anything else, so I call that network marketing suicide. So don't start promoting a company like crazy and then just fall off the face of the earth. Um, it's not going to work out too well for you. Uh, do do this. Do talk to prospects on the phone. Um, a lot of people are afraid of the phone. And I get that. I get that. Ask your sponsor or your, you know, your, um, your leader in your company. Ask them if they have any phone scripts to use. Um, or just start learning by talking to people. You know, a lot of the times I don't even use a script. If somebody's calling me, obviously I don't have a script in my hand at all times. I could easily pull it up, but I don't always have it on me at all times. So, 
what I've learned is that people will trust you more if you don't come off as a salesperson. If you come off as a salesperson, people don't, people are not going to um, connect with you very well. Um, people have learned even on, on the internet now not to really respond to advertisements anymore. They're looking to make connections with people. They're looking to make a connection with somebody who's going to listen to them, listen to their problems, listen to their struggles, and help them through it. They're looking for somebody who's going to offer them a solution out of their problems. That's what we do in network marketing. We offer solutions to problems. So, but talking on the phone with people, as, as I mentioned earlier, if you're calling your lead list, you're gonna, your uh, conversions are going to increase by 35, 45% just by doing that. Make yourself available, as Jeff mentioned earlier, um, and answer that phone. By answering that phone, I mean text, email, we've come to a, a place where um, People would rather just be on Facebook Messenger. People even send voice messages on Facebook. Um, just get on the phone with people. Do it the old-fashioned way. A lot of people will respect that and appreciate you more and be more likely to join you because you took the time to do it. Okay, and plus they want to know that you're available once they do sign up with you. Uh, find your secret sauce, okay? And I heard this. I hear this all the time on uh, Shark Tank. Uh, Mark Cuban's always talking about his, your secret sauce. You really have to have a secret sauce. Um, and if you don't know what that is, you will find it. Don't worry about it. In the beginning, you may not figure out what it is that you love, what it is it, what kind of marketing you do, or what is it about you that makes you different from everybody else in your company. For me, I'm, I'm still not really sure I know what it is, but I know that one thing that I do uh, quite different than a lot of people, and there's a lot of people that are very helpful in, in our company. Um, there's a lot of good leaders in our company. I'm not gonna, I wouldn't talk bad about anybody. But, one thing I do is I take a lot of time to help my members. I take a lot of time to create video content that I think is going to really help people, not only in my team, but other teams. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of that. That's probably my secret sauce. And the funny thing is when I started again, I didn't want to create videos. I thought that videos was going to really put my information out there a little too much. I wasn't really comfortable with it. Um, but I knew that, that if I could get into that and like it and it worked, then, then I need to take that risk. I need to get out of my comfort zone. So my secret sauce really has become video marketing in a way, um, which is funny because it's something that I said I wasn't going to do. But find your secret sauce, whatever it is. Find something that you can do on a daily or at least weekly basis. Um, find out what makes you different from the rest of the competition. Because as you're sitting there thinking, and maybe you're thinking, I don't want to shoot videos. I'm just going to use that as an example. You're sitting there thinking, I don't want to shoot videos. Let me go online and learn something else to do. Well, while you're sitting there trying to learn everything else, there's somebody, some kid out there, 16, 17 years old probably, is out there eating your lunch because he decided, you know what, I'm gonna shoot videos because I don't care. I care about my future more. I care about um, you know, what people think of me. So while you're sitting there waiting, there's gonna be somebody out there beating you to it. And we're not really competing in this industry that much. Um, I just feel like you could be waiting while somebody else is making their dreams happen. So why not make your dreams happen? All right, um, and then again, I already talked about this, uh, but go hard for 90 days, then make a schedule for yourself. So it's funny that Jeff asked that question, but go hard. Like I said, mention to your family, friends, say, hey, look, I'm not going to be around much. I might be home, but I'm not really home, okay? Um, just know that I love you, know that I'm going to be here, but I've really got to work hard at this for 90 days and make this happen because I want this for our family. I want this for our future. Um, and if you don't have anybody in your household, if you're you know, or maybe you're a single parent or whatever, then you have really no excuses because you don't have anybody you have to appease. Um, just go hard for 90 days and do everything you can. Spend every waking hour, um, you know, marketing the business or it's following up with prospects, answering your phone, whatever you have to do to make it happen, okay? Um, and last but not least, and I'll end on this, and this is about perfect, is to uh, surround yourself with winners. Surround yourself with people who are positive. Um, one of the big things that kills a lot of people's network marketing businesses is that they don't, they, they give off negativity, whether they're talking about somebody else in their business or they're talking about the industry as a whole or whatever. Negativity kills more people's businesses than anything else. Remember that people want to join somebody who's positive, somebody who's happy with what they do, somebody who has the answers that they're looking for. So if you're out there bashing something else, and I don't care, you may be bashing a nine to five job. You may be bashing Nike shoes. I don't know what you're bashing, but if you're spreading negativity out there on social media, guys, remember, Facebook is a great tool for network marketing. 
But if you're going to post an ad about your business or post a post about your business saying, hey, I'm doing this awesome in this, this company, I'm making X amount of money, and then right behind that you post um, some nasty, uh, skanky video, uh, recent music video or something, um, or post something negative, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that reflects on your business. So be careful about what you're, you're posting out there. Remember, people are constantly watching you. You don't know who's watching you. They, they may uh, wait and watch you for a few weeks before they join with you. But that is your platform. Social media can be a great way to, to build your business, but be careful about what you're posting. You know, but be yourself. Be yourself. But you're going to attract who uh, is attracted to you. So that's really all I wanted to go over today. We've covered quite a bit. Um, we had a couple of questions. I really do appreciate that. Again, Susan, the name is Eric Worre, um, Network Marketing Pro. A uh, great in- source of inspiration and motivation for myself and probably thousands of others, tens of thousands of others. Uh, Dwayne, appreciate that. <laughs> Dwayne said, Brandon Fry is the real deal, no hype. Yeah, I don't give any bull, no, no crap here. I'm not going to tell you something to do that I, I, don't, I wouldn't do myself. Um, I believe in telling people the, the fastest way from point A to point B, and that's through truth. That's through honest uh, network marketing and getting you know your opportunity out in as many people as possible. Okay, so that's end of this live event for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You can leave any feedback that you like. Um, if you're looking for a network marketing opportunity to get involved with and need some support, of course you can reach out to me. If you are already in a network marketing opportunity, um, I wish you all the success possible. I wish you uh, best of luck, and I hope that this has helped you quite a bit. Um, and uh, let's go out there and get it, guys. Let's not sit on our success. Let's go make it happen. All right, see you guys.